Hello everybody, this is the first video in the SOLIDWORKS Motion video series. We're going to take you through everything you might need to know about SOLIDWORKS Motion, from getting things to simply move around to getting some motion analysis done. The first thing I most find most people have trouble with is understanding the actual motion timeline. So let's go down there now. At the bottom of the screen, you have your model 3D view tab if you have MBD, and then you probably have a motion study tab. That default tab is always there, uh, and you can create additional motion studies as needed. Now a little bit of getting around. You're going to see a full copy of your feature tree over on the left hand side. Along the top you've got some commands and some features that you can add. Uh, and basically this timeline represents time-based changes. So for example, you can turn on or turn off or hide or show a component in your feature tree in SOLIDWORKS. And that is current. That's happening live. It's happening right now. But on the timeline, you have the opportunity to actually choose when it happens and sort of toggle between different states. So let's say for this part, I want to hide the stand at the bottom of this robot starting at one second and then going to two seconds. Now, I'm going to start by going directly to two seconds, and I'm just going to hide the part. And when you hide the part, that change is not immediate and global as it is in your SOLIDWORKS feature tree. It's now time dependent. So every time you see a key, that is an instruction, a feature change, uh, uh, some kind of an, uh, a current state that must be achieved. And because there's a difference between the keyframe at time zero and the keyframe at time two, motion puts in what's called a change bar. And all that means is something is changing. Now the colors of the keys, the colors of the change bars, those are all relevant, but we'll get to that in a minute. So we told it we wanted to go ahead and hide it, and so it goes from visible to hidden. And so what I'm going to do is come up here and hit Calculate. Now there is a Play button and a Calculate button. If you haven't calculated it yet, you want to hit Calculate, and you'll see the yellow bar along the top of the timeline will fill up solid yellow. If it's uh, dashed yellow, kind of have the hatching, that means that it still needs to be rebuilt very much like a SOLIDWORKS rebuild feature might show up up in your feature tree. Now if you watch this play back, for two seconds it's visible and then it just disappears at the end. And that's because visible or hidden is a binary item. You can't just sort of hide halfway. It's either hidden or it's not. So if you want to see it sort of fade away, what you'll do is set your time bar at two seconds. So this is where the time change is. So if you're using back to the future analogies, this is where Marty is right now. He's at two seconds and he's going to do something. He is going to change the appearance of this stand. So because it's hidden or shown, that's not going to give us a, the, the, the transition we want. What we're going to do is go in here to the advanced illumination we're going to change the transparency from 0 to 1. Now this is going to look a lot more realistic because when I hit calculate you'll see it starts to slowly fade away and if you go to about halfway through it's about half transparent and so you can kind of see it continuing on until it reaches full transparency and then it's completely hidden at the end. So that was technically two operations, and if you hover over this uh, key, you can see that the transparency and the visibility and even the color it thinks is set in that key, and it's set in this key, and because they are different, there is a change between them. Now remember I said I wanted it to start fading away at one second. The motion manager, the motion timeline, tends to be like one of those people who intentionally misinterprets you whenever you give it an instruction. If you've ever done this with your kids, have them explain how to do something and you just like do it wrong. Technically correct, but horribly wrong. So in this case, I said I want it hidden at two seconds. I said, great, uh, 
The only other information you gave me is that at zero seconds, it wasn't hidden. So I'm going to do a time change all the way through. Now that's something that another thing that a lot of times people don't understand about a timeline is on the left hand side, there's a whole bunch of keys. So there is a, a state at time zero that everything is set at. And when you open up your motion study, those keys get set originally, that very first time you open up the tab. So when you open the tab and you go to time zero, it should look exactly like it did the first time you opened the motion study. Now that's critical because a lot of times people will open a motion study, create all those keys, then they'll leave and they'll come back sometime later and those keys don't really represent what the assembly is anymore. So if you ever need to, start a whole new motion study when you're getting started. That way you don't accidentally create uh, a bunch of keys that then become sort of incorrect or obsolete. But that key at time zero, I want that key to actually sit at time t equals one. So the time t equals zero to t equals one, if I just do a drag and drop or a control c, control v, what it's going to do is copy the keys that were here over to one second. And you notice there's no time change in between there. The time bar would only show up if it was being changed. The time at T0 and T1, those are identical, so nothing is happening and nothing's taking place. So let's animate this again. Now it's going to be solid until one second, and then it's going to be fading away from there. Now if that doesn't quite make sense, just kind of think to yourself, for every action there's a start point and an end point. And as long as you set both of those together, you should be good to go. So let me show you another way you might do this. I want to take this piece right here, and I want to move it maybe over here. So I'm going to use just drag motion. We'll talk a little bit more in one of the later series about how this might work or how you might uh, uh, do various different animations. And we'll move it around here. And as I moved it around, I actually did two movements. I grabbed one part and moved it. I grabbed another part and moved it. And so what you end up with is two green change bars. Those are the ones that I dragged. And then you see some yellow change bars. Those yellow change bars are the ones that are being pulled along by mates. You also see things like these mates have solid bars indicating that those are active and currently, you know, in engaged. So if they ever get turned off at any point along the lines, that change bar will stop showing it's active. So hopefully that makes some sense. Um, there is something called auto key that's on automatically. So if you come in here and you make a change, because auto key is enabled, when you make that change and apply it, you don't even have to apply it, just let go and it moves that. So I'm gonna keep kind of moving this thing around, grabbing one piece, different, you know, different piece each time, and you're starting to see a little bit of a mess in my feature tree. Now let's see what animation happens, because I didn't really choose starts and stops for any of this. So when I hit play, it's gonna to try to move all around and it's gonna do some really weird stuff. All right, so I've made a pretty good mess of things. Let's go ahead and start a new motion study. So I'm gonna come up to the menu and I'm gonna say insert new motion study. You can also right click down at the bottom to say new motion study or insert new motion study down here. Uh, but just keep in mind that whatever the, the model is at the moment you create that new motion study, that's what populates time t equals zero. So choose carefully where you want this to start when you initially create your motion study so that you can work from there. A couple more things about working inside this timeline. If you're in a motion study tab, things apply where you are at that time bar. If you're in the model tab, those are independent. So changes made are going to be kind of affecting each other in some cases and not affecting other, uh, each other in other cases. What I mean by that is, let's say you delete an entire component away from this assembly. If I was to delete this part completely, that's a global change. 
So when I delete it here, you'll see that there's no more support. And when I go back to my motion study, that is completely gone from both motion studies. So that's what's called a global change. Whereas a change such as hiding or showing, so let me hide this foot while I'm in the model tab, right? That's made a change to the model as it's open right now. But if I go to my motion study at time zero, it saved the visibility of that foot when I initially created it. So that's why it's visible here, but I go back to the model tab and it's not visible. So this tends to be something that people have a hard time wrapping their head around. And one of the main problems, one of the main uh, new user issues that are causing issues for people in motion is that they leave the motion study tab up. Even if you minimize it here, that motion study tab is still active and all of your changes are only time dependent. So adding mates might be local adding making changes to your dimensions might be time dependent and then you realize you're on your motion study tab and you go back to your model tab and things change on you be very very aware of what's going on where you are and what you're changing uh, if you ever need to manually create a key or replace a key let's say that this foot you know I don't want it to be visible uh, I can come in here and I can right click and replace the key uh, with whatever is currently active, or I can come in and manually place a key. Uh, while you're playing this back, you do have the ability to go faster or slower. It's really helpful for when you're working with um, motion studies that don't take very long or you're trying to really look closely. Uh, and the last thing is the keys here are applied to everything in the model. That means that not only is it sort of keeping track of the visibility and the location and the transparency of each of the parts, it's also doing that for the lights, the cameras, and critically, the orientation and camera view. So this is something a lot of times people get really frustrated with. They say, okay, I'm going to move this thing over here, right? And then they zoom in and they say, okay, let's play that ascent or that motion. And when they hit calculate, boom it zooms way out right away so every time I zoom in or zoom out when I hit play from the beginning it always starts back over there it kinda of gets annoying so what you can do is you can do one of two things you can either right click and say disable playback of view keys this is one of my favorite ways to work and what this does is it says stop playing my camera views so now while I'm working, if I hit play, it won't zoom back out to that view. Now that's great while you're sort of adding mates and looking at things in detail and stuff like that. When you actually want it to play back, you can turn that off and then it'll play. And in fact, you could even have it uh, rotate around. So say I wanted to rotate it like this. I can come in here and place a camera key and now, when I calculate it, it's rotating the camera as a po a in addition to making that movement. Now there's one more key here, which is disable view key creation. I always leave this on because here's what will happen if you don't have this on. This is basically turning off auto keys for your camera only. So you come over to two seconds and you say, let me look at this over here. And then you come to four seconds and you say, oh, I'm gonna look at this thing over here. And you're just kind of looking, right? You're not actually wanting to make a whole bunch of changes. And then you come over here and you look like this and notice it's creating keys. Again, number one thing that causes people grief is way too many keys getting created. And when they go back to animate it, they're getting a bunch of chaos that they're not wanting and not needing. So keep your space clean. Stay out of the timeline when you're not working in the timeline and set these options appropriately. And uh, we'll start to kind of get into more specifics of how you should do motion in the next video.